Namaskan on. Today, I'm going to draw what we call in the Seneca language, Nonganyago. And the Nonganyago translates to mean a beaver. And I'm going to start off by doing some basic shapes for this beaver. Kind of like a egg shape like that. Maybe a little bit more pointy on this side. And I'm gonna draw his his body like that make it kind of a uh, kind of round like this just as a guideline and sketch it that way so I'm gonna make his arms and you know his hands kind of come down like that on one hand or one paw I'll do the other one and show him like this looks like he's got a big belly but we'll make this other leg kind of come like this And you know, we're gonna make him make his feet down here. And a lot of people don't realize that uh, Nonganyago has feet. His hind feet are, they're webbed. So I'm just gonna show a couple of his toes like that, three of them, maybe four, just kind of off to the side. He's got almost like duck feet, like webbed. So you get the idea of it. So let's move my paper over a little bit here. And now we'll show his tail and we'll show it kind of like an oval shape. What he uses to get around so there you have some basics now we'll take a look at his head and I'm gonna I like to draw a line like this a little ways from the top of his head and I'm using that for a guideline because you know that they're made so that they can have their nose sticking out of the water and their eyes also and they don't have big eyes just gonna kinda put that in there like that but their ears are also right in line with it and that's so when they're swimming through the water, they only have to have this much of their head sticking out. They can have their nose so they can breathe, their eyes they can see, and their ears so they can hear, and just going right through the water like that and have it on top of the water, they can hear, see, and breathe. Make his face a little bit. Um, maybe I'll use my eraser here. Huh, I'm going to have to find an eraser, I think. But anyways, 
you get the idea of it. Now I can use, I'm going to go back with a, I use a brown marker. I'll draw the outline of him. I'm going to show his neck and his back kind of go into one like that. So while I'm kind of putting the shape of him in there, and show his paws. He's got a big nostril, front nose, front nostril, like that. Beaver is an amazing animal. And they talk about people being busy as beavers because they work hard. They're smart. They can build a dam in the dark at night. Some people will go and knock a beaver's dam down and they'll go right there, right back that night have it almost fixed back by the next daylight. I use a marker like that. Color in his eye. I'm gonna leave one spot of it showing. I'm gonna color his ear. And the Nonganyago is a rodent, like a mouse. It's in the same family. You can follow along, do your own details. I, I, I'm going to make his hands, his, his paws, colored black because they're, they're like a leathery type skin they have. And, you know, the beaver was very important in history because of his awesome fur. And a lot of people don't realize that our history as Seneca people was impacted by the fur trade long time ago. And the furs that were wanted the most was the beaver's pelt, the beaver's fur. And you know, it's interesting because the beaver's fur would be traded with traders from other countries would come over here and trade for the beaver's skins, beaver's fur. And we would trap them and kill them, take their fur off and sell the beaver skins beaver fur and yeah it was would be could be made into things you know by us make warm mittens make warm soft fur on it and you can see that I'm taking time here to show the dark like I said, almost leathery, kind of a different kind of, hard to explain it. 
their feet, that fifth toe would be on the side, but we can't see it. Now, our people used to eat the beaver tails, and when it was in time was times of plenty, long time ago, they described it as a beaver tail being in everyone's bowl. So, and that the best way to be courteous to your to visitors and to other people was to never just stick a knife towards that bowl with a beaver tail in it but that we're supposed to be generous and if we have food that we share it so and you know a beaver's tail kind of has like a like a pattern on it. almost that it it's almost like scales that they got on there so I'm just drawing it with that marker So now I'm going to take a minute and I think I'm going to, maybe I'm going to show a pattern or show a design on him instead of just have him be all brown. So I'm going to take the pencil and erase some of those guidelines that I had on his body. And I think I'm gonna do a design like this. And you can use and do whatever design you like. Maybe you have one in mind. I'm gonna kinda do a, a beadwork or a quill work design. I'm just kind of trying to decide which way I want to make this design on him. Maybe yeah, I'll do a floral design on it, a flower. Do some leaves on there. Yeah, I think that'll that'll do. Okay. So now I kind of have it sketched on, and I'm gonna use my marker. And show a design. Kind of do it the best I can. Doesn't have to be totally perfect. So whatever design you want to make on him you can do it and I like to do this sometimes just to give it more
cultural idea, I guess, you know. It's just however you want to interpret it. But our people have used plants as medicine and as food and it wound up being seen on things like our clothing. And I think I'll take some brown here and just Oh, maybe that's not brown. Hmm. Maybe it's purplish. Color in that part of the design. Now that I did that, I kind of got to keep going with it. have a bunch of different colors and I'll take a second and put some different ones in this in this design some bright colors on the flower. Like this. show some real bright colors also on the leaves. But these kind of designs were done a long time ago, like on moccasins, for instance, or they'd be doing these on bags, for instance, purses, and our people Maybe they would take them and sell them, sell their beadwork. One of the famous places they were selling beadwork all the time was by Niagara Falls. And State Fair and different places like that. Now, I'm getting a little brave with these colors. Showing some different kinds of color combinations. And uh, I think I need to find a brown to use. And maybe I'll go back to, uh, I, I guess I won't go back to that. It's pretty dark. Let's see what I got. I'm sure I can find a brownish color. But this gives you uh, quite a different look of a beaver. on it and uh, I, like 
I said, I like to change things up a little bit and express myself. I love the animals and how they look. And I try to give them a little bit more character, I guess, you know. So now I'm going to take and I'm going to leave a white space around my design that will show it as it'll help it to stand out a little bit, make it look like it has a white outline of beads or something on the design. And you see how it kind of makes it pop out when I do that. Well, like I said, the Nonganyaga is one of our clan animals. Uh, certainly easy to understand why people would want to have the characteristics that these Nonganyagas have as animals. Because they, as I said, are hard workers. And we would want our people and our kids to be ambitious like that and have that quality. So I'm taking the time and going around my design a little bit. As I said, we eat different things now, but long, long ago, we ate, ate everything that we took. So if we used the Nonganyagos fur, we would also eat the meat. And that's how, just how it was and how it is, how it should be. Now you notice that when I'm coloring him in, I'm doing it in a way, in, an, in the direction that I think his fur would be. So it gives it that look of fur. But Nonganyak gone. He's that's his the word for him as an animal. And we call the clan, the beaver clan, those people that are in the clan are referred to as Hudigange Ga. Hudigange Ga. Hudigange Ga with the Asonan. Beaver clan. That's what they call them. Hadia song. They call it that. So now you see I'm getting working my way up. Coloring him in as I go. Show texture on his face. And sometimes it's just as important the spots that you leave bare as the parts that you color in. So I'm going to leave a area here that I'm not going to color and hope that it shows it like a, almost like it's sh shiny. I'm 
and then go back in and show some shadow here and there like that But those of you that belong to Hudigangi Ga Jago, and your symbol is a is one that's important. They also defend their places. Boy, I, I took a canoe one time and I went in a twin ponds and there was a big house, big area where the Hutigant Gate got, they had a big house. And that was their territory, that pond. And it was getting towards dark. I thought I was gonna do some night fishing. And I rigged up a lantern and I was taking a canoe out with a lantern on it to go fishing at night. Oh, those Nonganyak, they got mad. They swam real close to my canoe and they used that big tail and they slapped the water and they made a whistling type sound that I never heard before, but I knew what it meant. And it meant that Nong. Nonganyago was telling me to get out of there. That's his place. Well, if I was trying to fish, and I realized that pretty quick that I wasn't going to catch too much fish there with him mad. So he got his way, and I left. Yeah, we'll go with a darker, a little bit darker color here. Maybe sometime you'll be lucky and maybe you've seen them out when you were out in the woods or out in fishing or something by their water. Be careful of them. You don't want to make them mad. But this is a version of this one of our clan animals, no Ganyaka. Hope you had fun. Hope you st stayed with it.